India is a land of temples. This ancient nation has numerous ancient temples, some of them as old as 3rd century, before Christ. However, most of the ancient surviving temples in India are made up of stone. There are very few ancient temples made up of bricks which are still surviving. Most of them have been lost due to the vagaries of weather and time. The district of Kanpur in the state of Uttar Pradesh in India still has few surviving ancient brick temples. However, there is not much data available about these old brick temples. One such temple complex is located at Nimbia Keda in the Kanpur district. One of the best preserved brick temple complexes of the 9th 10th century is found in the sleepy village of Nibia Khera. This temple complex has an east facing main shrine with four subsidiary shrines placed in a particular manner that is quite uncommon. Two Nandis sit majestically facing the entrance of the temple though one is severely damaged and the other appears to have been installed at a later date. Ganga and Yamuna are seen standing on their Vahnas of Makra and Kachchapal respectively with their attendants on either side of the lower part of the door jam. The door frame of the Gerba Griha is made of stone and has a beautiful carving of goddess Gajlakshmi seated on a lotus flanked by elephants on the Lalete Bimba. There is a panel of the Navagrahas carved above the door lintel. This temple complex is rather unknown and has lived in the shadow of the more famous Bhita Gaon temple that is a little distance away for years. Nibia Khera is a village in Kanpur Dehak district of Uttar Pradesh. Not much is known about the antiquity of the village as no inscription was found from the place which could have helped in understanding the history of the place. At present, it is just another village like many other small villages of India where life appears standing still for a while. There are stunning floral, geometric and linear motifs seen on the exteriors. Ganga and Yamuna are seen standing on their Vahnas of Makra and Kachchapal respectively with their attendants on either side of the lower part of the door jam. A region marked by the nurturing presence of the two holy rivers, the Ganga and the Yamuna. The two river deities who in their earthly form had cradled the riverine civilization of ancient Madhya Desha as its lifelines. There is a lovely Shiva Ling placed in the Sanctum Sanctorum. Though the interior of the main shrine is quite plain, the exquisitely decorated exterior facade more than makes up for it. A panel on the inner west wall of the shrine appears to have some carvings which have unfortunately suffered from the ravages of the weather. One surmises that they could be of Lord Kartikeya and Lord Virbhadra. The information plaque at the entrance to the complex put up by the archaeological department. Hidden from the oft-beaten path a number of ancient structures still stand in solitude attesting to a refined artistic tradition which was ornate in style, superior in quality and splendid in view. A tradition that for centuries had pervaded the region's cultural landscape in a symphony of creative exuberance and spiritual fulfillment. Though no inscription has been found, it is likely that the Gojara Pratihara dynasty who ruled over a large part of northern India built this temple. A 
Apparently this temple was initially dedicated to the worship of Bhagwan Vishnu, but with the passage of time, Shiva replaced Vishnu as the main deity of the temple and came to be known as Bhadreshwar Mahadev. Ninth to 10th century CE, this brick temple complex is built in Panchayatna style with a central shrine and four subsidiary shrines. However not all the subsidiary shrines are at the corners. Three subsidiary shrines are built at the corner but one is built in line with the northern wall of the central shrine. Central shrine is a fine example of Latina Shikra of Nagar temple style. A small antarala preceded the Gavagriha. Sanctum has a barrel-like roof while the shikra above the sanctum rises above the base in curvilinear fashion. Bhadranishes are provided all external walls however all are empty at present. The front portion of the antarala seems to have been renovated in recent times. The four subsidiary shrines are almost same in style and construction. All are without roof. The entrance is triangular in shape. All these shrines are empty at present. Echoes from the storied past of an ancient riverine civilization a visit to the brick temple at Nibia Khera, Kanpur. The subsidiary shrines are constructed as Triyatha and their shikaras would have also been intricately carved but unfortunately their upper part seems to have either collapsed or been damaged. All these shrines are empty at present. Archaeologists and historians are still trying to determine what exactly happened to this temple complex and the idols that were seated in these smaller shrines. Although now empty, these niches would have once housed images of deities or other religious iconography associated with the presiding deity of the temple. This 8th early 9th century CE temple at Nibiyakita is one of the earliest surviving examples of the Latina Shikra in brickwork. The Shikra of the temple is made up of Saptavumis, seven stories, with patterns of Chandrashalas adorning its Bhadras and Karnas. Bhumi Amalkas are placed in the Karnas at the terminal of each Bhumi story. Dental trimmings are ribboned around the lowermost portion of the Shikra. The Griva. Amalaka and Kalsha which would have once constituted the top portion of the Kavilinia Shikra are now lost. Jagti or the platform on which temples were traditionally built is absent in this temple, whether by design or through later rebuilding and modifications is a matter of speculation. The temple structure here takes shape from a well-crafted Vedibandha showcasing a Kumbha, Kalsha, Antarapata and Kapotpali which are some of the traditional mouldings associated with the Vedibandha.
Ganga and Yamuna are present at the bottom of Antarala door jams. An image of Lakshmi is present at Laltabimba, center of lintel. Navagriha, nine planets, are present on the architrave above the door lintel. A Shivalinga is placed inside the sanctum. There is a panel on the inner west wall of the sanctum however the images are much worn out due to excessive usage of vermilion and other ointment like material. It appears that one image could be of Kartikeya and another might be of Virbhadra. Having been used in the construction of Vedic altars brick had been the material of choice for religious structures since ancient times. Their versatility as a vehicle of expression can be seen in the profusion of intricate patterns, elaborate mouldings, and fine reliefs they carried within their warm and exuberant hues. The material's contribution towards the preservation of art and architectural legacies in regions where a stone was hard to access can hardly be emphasized enough. Ganga and Yamuna as part of temple iconography can be first traced to the Gupta period. The earliest known sculptural depiction of the Ganga and Yamuna is on a 5th century relief found in the Udyagiri cave number no. 5 in MP where the artist has captured the descent of the two rivers on earth on stone. Their depiction at the entrance of a temple is to provide the devotees entering the sacred abode with a darshan of the river deities first. An act symbolic of a ritual bath in their purifying waters before entering the temple. The doorway is an iconostasis of the descent of the rivers, of Shakti, and of the ascent of life competing for its heavenly origin in the creepers rambling upwards on the branches, sakas, of the frame, in the multiform concatenations within their stalks, and on each single saka, in the sequence of lovers, Mithuna, prancing chimeri, sadla, and jubilant spirits. Among such places which still preserve within their humble folds noteworthy ambience of considerable historical significance is Nibiakera. This quite old village lying to the southwest of Kanpur, a few miles from Bhitagaon, is known for its ancient brick temple complex built sometime in the 8th or early 9th century CE during the age of the Pratiharas. Besides the brick temple complex, Archaeological explorations in Nibiakera have brought to light an ancient mound which can further help in enhancing our knowledge of the region and its history.
Temple construction under the Pratiharas drew upon for its inspiration the architectural traditions prevailing in the region of Madhya Desha since the times of the Guptas. Brick temples constructed during the reign of this dynasty are however distinct in several of their features from the stone shrines which follow a more mainstream pattern of design and architecture. This characteristic style in all probability was the artistic contribution of a school of masons who worked exclusively in that material. This brick temple complex built in the Panchayatana style houses four subsidiary shrines on its southeastern, southwestern, northeastern, and northern corners and one east facing the main shrine which is dedicated to the presiding deity. The central shrine is based on a stellate plan with Dwadash Badras. This temple is one of the two temples in northern India which have a stellate plan, the other being the Shiva temple in Inda, Guna district. MP on which Michael Maester writes and which is equally applicable to this ancient shrine. A study of the 12-sided stone temple at Inda provides evidence for the interaction between the ritual geometry of the Vastu Mandala, with its square grid, and the constructional geometry of the Sulba Sutras, using circles to locate squares, to which new meaning may have been attached in this period. Construction of the outer walls of this temple depends entirely on a constructional geometry using circles to produce turned squares, the relationship between the inner sanctum and the outer walls, however, continues to be determined by a ritual grid, this plan could not have been merely an architect's conceit, but seems to have had implicit numerological iconographic, and cosmological significance, layout of the temple complex dot. Note the bhadras in the main shrine.
The central shrine appears to be stellate on plan with Dwadasha Vadras, 12 sides on the exterior, while the interior is square in plan. It has a mandapa, an antarala and a gava griha but the original mandapa has since collapsed. Even the antarala appears to have been modified later and probably the original stellate plan had panchadasa vadras. Normally, in the panchayatna layout, one sees the subsidiary shrines placed at the four corners with the main shrine in the middle. However, here we see three subsidiary shrines built at the corners but one shrine is built in line with the northern wall of the main shrine. Here we see all the shrines rising directly from a large raised platform. Though, a jaggi, platform, is common in most of the temples built by the Pratiharas who favored the Nagra style of architecture. This temple is one of the earliest surviving examples of the Latina Shikra, slightly curved single spire placed over the square Sanctum Sanctorum, in brick. The richly embellished Shikra is styled as Saptavumi, seven seats.
It was the age of Kannauj or Kanyakubja, the imperial city of Isanvaman, which dominated Madhya Desha, the heartland of India. It was the coveted prize of the three imperial powers racing for all India supremacy. Ultimately it passed into the hands of the Pratiharas around 815 AD, remained the metropolis of power, the most influential center of culture. Kilometer Munshi Madhya Desha commanded the main commercial and cultural arteries of North India, and had intimate linkages with all regions. Surviving pieces from Madhya Desha bespeak a flourishing art of temple building comparable to the best specimens available, sculptures and architectural fragments from Kannauj, Varanasi, Sarnath, and Mathura, and from sites like Bik, Bara, Kara, Koisambai and Anjdi, and Prabhau mark an apogee of refinement and attest to the prevalence of an opulent style under the regime of the Pratiharas. Kannauj, the capital city, may well have been the main center from which influence radiated to contiguous tracts. Krishna Deva Kanyakubja or Kannauj was one of the imperial cities of Madhya Desha which shaped the culture and politics of the land it held sway over, and beyond. It was a well-fortified city with lofty towers, an agreeable climate, fertile land, and excellent produce through the seasons. Its myriad flora, woods, lakes, and ponds enhanced the beauty of its landscape. Kanyakubja in its ancient past was a prosperous region with a thriving economy. Its populace was religious and given to learning whose refined culture was as much admired as its virtuous deeds and intellectual accomplishments. Apart from its locational advantage, Kanyakubja possessed other attributes which made it an ideal choice as capital for many a royal dynasty. Under the Pratiharas the kingdom of Kanyakubja attained its zenith in power, learning, and culture. They created the tradition of an imperial glory which long endured and survived many rude shocks. It is reflected in the literary works of Raj Sekahara, the last Indian poet who could, with justifiable pride, refer to his royal patron as the Maharajadri Raja of Aryavata. But the best testimony to the power and the glory of Pratiharas is the eloquent tribute paid to their wealth and resources by their inveterate enemies, the Arabs. The Sagatal, Dwalia, inscription of Mihira Voja throws light on the early rulers of the Pratihara dynasty.